Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are back again with Assassin's Creed Origins as we are continuing our brand new uh, non-combat DLC mode, which is Discovery Tour. Uh, so this one here, uh, we are getting ready for our next tour, which is called uh, The Great Library of Alexandria, as we need to discover the history of the greatest library in Antinity antiquity and uh, learn about the great minds of the ancient world. There are 11 stations here. Estimated time will be 7 minutes. And uh, by the way, um, I did manage to um, to get a little bit of a head start on this one while recording, but I got interrupted by a phone call, so I had to abandon that tour and start all over again. Uh, so without further ado, we will get right to that tour very, very soon. BBR is working fine. Alright, let's get this one underway. The Great Library of Alexandria. Near the district of royal palaces and within the Moseon was the most famous library of all antiquity. The Library of Alexandria was built to house all of human knowledge. At its pinnacle, the library was believed to contain over 700,000 parchments. Throughout the centuries, fires and wars between Christianity and paganism destroyed the library, leaving nothing behind. The loss of the building, and more importantly, its vast collection is immeasurable. As no descriptions are available, the team's rendition of the Library of Alexandria was inspired by the visuals of the Library of Chalcis at Ephesus. Alright, so uh, before we continue on here, uh, this was another behind-the-scenes uh, station here on recreating the Great Library of Alexandria here. And again, throughout the centuries, there were fires and wars that happened between Christianity and paganism, which destroyed it, and that left nothing behind at all. The vast collection is immeasurable, and of course, uh, with the team of Ubisoft, the rendition of the Library of Alexandria was inspired by the visuals of the library as well. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so that's the second section, or second station, excuse me. So let's go ahead and uh, continue on with the tour. While much of the collection was purchased at the government's expense, the library also obtained books through other means. Any books owned by travelers coming through the city were seized to be copied for the library. The copy would then be returned to the owner and the original entered into the library's collection. Alexandria offered unrivaled intellectual and cultural attractions. Eminent scholars from Athens, Rhodes, and other Greek centers traveled to the city to learn and engage with other free thinkers. Both the Moseon and the library were at the center of groundbreaking ideas and creative expression. The great minds of antiquity were usually well versed in many disciplines, which were often associated to specific schools of thought. The Peripatetics, the Stoics, and the Cynics were among the most well-known schools of the time. It is clear that Alexandria lived up to its fundamental role as a city for intellectuals, nurturing many great minds whose impact reverberates through our modern world. Uh -huh. 
από του ύπου του κλαθμού. Ναι, όπως Hypatia of Alexandria was a Greek mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, and inventor. Though born in Greece, she eventually migrated to Alexandria, like many great minds of the time. It is there that she became the head of the Neoplatonist school of Alexandria. From most accounts, she was highly respected by her fellow Alexandrians, both as a teacher and a philosopher. With her death, the age of great ancient scientific discoveries came to an end. Callimachus was born in Cyrene and educated in Athens. After his studies, he moved to Alexandria to work in the great library. A poet and a critic, he strongly rejected the epic format of Homeric poems and instead fervently supported a shorter, more judiciously formulated style of poetry. His epigrams and elegiac poems were emulated by later poets. His work was extremely popular, second only to Homer's own works. <coughs> Sorry, I uh, clear my throat right there. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let's continue. It was in Alexandria that mathematician Euclid, the father of geometry, wrote the elements, laying out the foundational work of what would become modern algebra and number theory. Euclidean geometry would become one of the most influential systems in the evolution of mathematics. How do you calculate the circumference of the Earth with a camel, two sticks, and shadows cast by the sun? This is what Eratosthenes of Cyrene described in his principal work, Geography, while he was director of the Great Library of Alexandria. He is credited for the invention of the armillary sphere around 250 BCE. Okay, now before we move on here, um if you want to pause for the uh, the paragraph there, you can. Now I'm actually going to hide this for just a quick minute here, and uh, you can definitely take a look at the whole map. So there's a lot of countries that border India, Asia, Libya, uh, even Germania, and such and such. Okay, so that's just a quick little pause right there. Let's make sure my PS. Uh, yep, it's working all right. Okay, so there's your full map right there. We're at station nine. Two more to go. There you go. Of course, you can still pause and see the map as well if you want to. Let's continue and let our history experts continue from here. The earliest known and most complete armillary sphere of antiquity was the Meteoroscopion of Alexandria with an imposing nine rings compared to the three or four of most other astrolabes. Known as the Zodiac Krikatoi amongst the Greeks, the Meteoroscopion was used to determine the location of celestial bodies around the Earth. Every self-respecting astronomer of antiquity would have sought to use this tool to better understand the celestial movements. By the way, before we go to the last one, let's interact with this one here. Okay, so there's a little more information about the Zodiac Krikatoi. It's known as an armillary uh, sphere to Romans. The observational device determines the locations of celestial bodies around the Earth. It's also the spheric center of the universe. And the position is fixed by corresponding the latitude and meridian rings to the position of the sun or star. Sounds really, really interesting there. Okay, we'll close that and we'll go to the last station and wrap it up. Pythagoras of Samos was a well-known and respected philosopher and mathematician. 
He is best known for the Pythagorean theorem. However, there is proof that the theorem existed in Babylonia and India long before Pythagoras was born, casting some doubts as to who exactly originated the theorem. All right, so uh, that completes the tour of the Great Library of Alexandria. And I do believe there might have been one more piece of interactive information here. Let's see what we have. Oh, it's just the proof right there. Okay. My kingdom for a glass of water. Alrighty, so uh, that what there we go. So uh, that was uh, let me just look at the passport here. Yep. So that was the Great Library of Alexandria. That tour is completed. We have two more to go in Alexandria, and uh, we'll move on to something else after that. Uh, so yeah, th thanks again for watching this, everybody. We have plenty more to do. I'll be covering every single tour throughout this channel, so definitely stay tuned to that. Until next time, folks, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Take care.